Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Spencer here, and he's filming. Uh, we brought my S13 today. It's fully running and driving now. So we finished up the SR20 swap. There's still a lot of loose odds and ends, but it's still fun. So we're gonna show you a couple things, including the car. So the body kit, it's in a very transitional phase if it's super, super bad. Um, and it's actually really, really crappy. So I don't know if I'll end up keeping it or not. Um, yeah, the outside looks really bad. The inside looks pretty bad, but the engine bay looks really good. So it's a work in progress still, but it's fun. Still got the eBay style hood pins. Here's the SR. Still just has a stock T25 on it. Uh, pretty much everything is stock. Wiring harness is just the original wiring harness cut up and modified so that it will work with the US chassis. Um, yeah, pretty basic, nothing crazy. Has the uh, parts by Max high mount intercooler. GK Tech oil catch can. I'm not sure if this oil catch can does very good. I'm not really too sure. I'll have to check it out when I do an oil change. Uh, coil rad for cooling, stock fan clutch, stock shroud. It's running 10 pounds of boost, so it's running off of the T25 wastegate pressure. It's more than enough fun for me because I've never really had anything that's even this fast. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, out back here, um, I got really lucky. There's, other than the lower control arm, those are stock and they're really blown out. Um, the rear arms are all Megan. Um, I got them at the junkyard. Somebody like tipped me off that they're on a subframe just sitting on the floor at the junkyard. So I got them for a really, really good deal. And they helped me correct like a lot of the camber that was out back here from just being on eBay coilovers that are really lowered for no good reason uh yeah but the subframe is super bad that's probably next winter's plan is to do a lot of this all the bad bushings in the rear and the front uh, the exhaust it's supple three inch exhaust with nothing in it it's really not bad when you're just driving around like normal but when you're really on it it's kind of like too loud for me but that's kind of the fun thing about drifting too, it's kind of obnoxious. So I guess it works, I'm just not used to it. <laughs> Alright, so here on the interior, uh, it's pretty much as stripped as it gets. Unfortunately I have this stock seat over here for my unfortunate passenger with a three-point harness and no roll cage as you can see, which is not really ideal, but it works for now. Um, I do have a dash for it, I plan to put a dash in it. I'm just in the process of bondoing it and flocking it. Uh, there's a lot of wiring in here that I moved from the engine bay to in here that uh, I would have definitely done some things differently if I thought about it a little longer, but it works for now. Um, yeah, it's pretty much very bare bones simple. I got Bluetooth stereo. <laughs> the seat is, eh, it works, it holds me in. Driving gloves from shirts tucked in, these are pretty cool. And this is an Nardi from my E30, so this is like a really sentimental wheel for me. And this is just lame. <laughs> Let's see if this works. So yeah, moving forward with the car, uh, there's a lot of stuff that I still need to do with it. Uh, this winter I'll probably refresh all the suspension, bushings, wheel bearings, and maybe do like an angle kit if I have enough savings. Um, there's lots of stuff that's 
definitely not correct here. I've got my uh, brake line to the booster is like collapsed because it's like Home Depot tubing. So I gotta get the right tubing and put a check valve in there. I wanna tuck these brake lines away, stuff like that. But uh, yeah, for now it's a lot of fun. It's Vegas Drift Tech Legal. So as soon as the world starts to get back to normal and we can go to Vegas Drift, that's where I wanna drive this and have fun. So thanks for watching the video, guys.